Welcome to 6.10's Math Moment. Today's students worked with multi-step word problems. So in the problems, they definitely had more than one step. Some of the problems would have two, and some of them would have more than two. So we're going to look at some tricky problems today that actually have more than two steps, just to give you some of, of reference for some of the work problems that they might see on their homework. All right, so let's look at example one. It says the charge for getting Henry's car fixed is $70 per hour. And remember that per means times, because it's just like each. It took the mechanic six hours to fix his car. So the first thing that I want to note is that we have $70 per hour, and it took six hours just to fix his car. All right, so then he needed $445.16 of replacement parts. So that's going to be added in. I know that I have to pay for the hours that they worked on the car plus the parts. But then it says he got a coupon in the mail that was for $50. How much did Henry have to pay? So when I think of the word coupon and I think of um, a sale and something that, that I'm getting um, off of that, then that makes me think of subtraction. So I actually have three different operations I'm going to be doing in this problem. I need to multiply the amount of hours per, or the amount times the amount of hours. I need to add in how much will be for the parts, and I also need to subtract the $50. So when I look at this in one long line, it becomes really overwhelming. So we really just want students to focus on one section at a time. So I'm just going to focus first on this 70 times 6. All right, so 70 times 6, I'm going to take off to the side. 6 times 0 is 0. 6 times 7 is 42. So I have that answer is $420 for the man hours, how much they spent, um, how much time they spent working on his car. Now I need to add in this $445.16. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here. Now I didn't have any cents on my 420, so I went ahead and had added two zeros for placeholders. Just adding here, quick, simple addition. So it's $865.16 would be my answer for my total so far that I've spent on the car. A good thing he's got a coupon because that is quite a bit to spend. So he's going to take off $50 off of that for that coupon that he has um, to use. So I'm going to take $865.16 minus that $50 off. 6 minus 0 is 6, 1 minus 0 is 1, 5 minus 0 is 5, 6 minus 5 is 1, and then I have the 8. So I still have to pay $815, or excuse me, Henry has to pay $815.16 to get his car fixed. So multiple step problem, we had three different steps, but encourage your student, figure out what those steps are and then just solve one problem, one at a time. Think about what numbers need to go together, what makes the most sense, and then solve one step at a time to help them keep their work organized. All right, so for example two, I moved the problem up a little bit so we have a little bit more um, space to work with, but example two says Michael has two more pencils than Kara. Rachel has three times as many as Kara and one more than Jesse, and Jesse has five pencils. How many pencils does Michael have? So I've got lots of different steps in this problem that we need to work, but the first thing I want to notice is how many people am I working with? I have Michael, Kara, Rachel, and Jesse. So this is a perfect problem to encourage your student to make a table and to really organize their work. So the first person I'm working with is Michael. I also have Kara, Rachel, and Jesse. Now this will help me to organize my thoughts and really see what information I'm working with. So it says, Michael has two more pencils than Kara. So I know that he has two more than Kara. And I'm just going to put C since I'm just kind of taking notes. Then it says, Rachel has three times as many as Kara and one more than Jesse. So I have a lot of information about Rachel. She has three times as many as Kara, and she also has one more than Jesse. All right, and then I see that Jesse has five pencils. So I know exactly how many Jesse has. I don't have to do anything with Jesse. Now, when I look back at my notes, the question says, how many pencils does Michael have? So this is really what I'm focused on to answer my question. 
but because I only have information about Michael in reference to Kara, I'm also going to have to figure out how many Kara has to help me solve how many Michael has. So I need to start working with the information that I have. It says Rachel has three times as many as Kara, but I don't know how many Kara has. But it does say that Rachel also has one more than Jesse. I do know how many Jesse has. He has five. One more than that would just be six. So now I know how much Rachel has, and I've used this piece of information, so I'm going to kind of clear it away so I don't have to um, focus on it anymore and don't get distracted. So now I know how many Jesse has. I know how many Rachel has. I still have a clue I can use to help me with Kara, and then this clue would help me with Michael. So let's focus here first. Rachel has three times as many as Kara. So when I think about that language, three times as many means that Rachel has more. She has three times more than Kara. So really, Kara has a smaller number. I know that if I multiply three and six, I won't get a smaller number. So when you see these words, as many as, lots of times it wants you to do the opposite operation. So instead of times, I'm going to take six divided by three. I know that six divided by three is two, so that makes me think that Kara has two pencils. And I've used this fact. Now I want to go back and focus on that. Is six three times two? If I say that Rachel has three times as many as Kara, could I think take three times two and get six? And I can't. So that helps me know that I was on the right track. That made a lot of sense. So now I know how many Jesse has. I know how many Rachel has. I've used the clues that I had there. I know how many Kara has. Now I can focus on Michael. It says that Michael has two more than Kara. Well, if Kara has two, two more than that would just be two plus two or four. So my final answer is that Michael has four pencils. A lot of work to get to that answer, but if you would encourage your student to organize their work and really think about what information do I have about each person, it will really help them as they're working through all those different steps. If you have any questions about multi-step word problems or 6.10, make sure to see your math teacher.